From Atlanta, Georgia, it is the Marlins and the Braves, last of a four-game series, and then an off day tomorrow before heading to the nation's capital. But first, the Marlins try to salvage the last game of this four-game series here at beautiful SunTrust Park, and they will do so behind Jose Urania. And Kevin Gossman goes for the Atlanta Braves. With that, we say hi again, everybody, and welcome inside the broadcast booth. Paul Severino and Todd Hollinsworth. So again, this Marlins team looking for offense any way that they can get it. So. Why not call up a guy who's hitting 465 in August? Austin Dean called up to make his major league debut tonight. Well, listen, it's been a bit of an organizational theme this year. If you're going to produce in the minor leagues, if there's an opportunity for you at the big league level, and right now this Marlins team, they've been dealing with some injuries and some underproduction. Dean has been outstanding. He's been a tremendous hitter at AAA this season. The one thing that clearly stands out, the 345 average. He's hitting just about everything in sight. He's a welcome sight to this Marlins offense that needs a little boost right now. Nice approach last night, but on the whole, in the month of August, they've been struggling. Absolutely. Absolutely, a gay fourth round pick in 2012. So a kid from the system. Same can be said for the Atlanta Braves with the guy in the top spot in their lineup, Ronald Acuna Jr. Yes, homers in five straight games, but how about leadoff home runs in three straight games? Well, I'll tell you what, I've been asked one question repeatedly today. What is the first pitch of the ball game going to look like? I just got asked it literally five minutes before we came on air by somebody walking me down the hallway. Mr. Hollinsworth, what are you going to see? What are we going to see for the first pitch? I don't know the answer to the question, but I'll tell you what. Urania could be the right man for the job. He's got numbers against Acuna, and again, he's in a position where this Marlins team needs a big start for him tonight. You know he's going to be aggressive, and you certainly know he is not going to back down from the challenge of going up against this Braves offense that is absolutely rolling right now. Well, hopefully, Jose Urania can set the tone, and the Marlins can get out of town with a victory. We step aside here from Atlanta when we come back. All part of another debut for the Marlins. Today, it's Dean's debut. We got Marlins and Braves action coming up from Atlanta next.
Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By WB Mason. Who but WB Mason, the official office supply company of the Miami Marlins. By Chevrolet. See your South Florida dealer today. And by your local Toyota dealer, Toyota. Let's go places. We welcome you back to SunTrust Park here in Atlanta. The Marlins and the Braves wrapping up a four-game series played over the course of three days. Of course, with that doubleheader on Monday, Marlins look to salvage the final game of this set. Here is the starting lineup presented to you by Southwest. We've seen Rafael Ortega up in that top spot the last few days. He's back there again today. JT Real Muto with a home run last night. Starting to come out of what was a little bit of a slump for him since the break. And Austin Dean makes his major league debut in left field tonight. He hits sixth for the Marlins. That lineup will face Kevin Gaussman, a deadline acquisition for the Atlanta Braves. This is his third start. His last was terrific and exactly what the Braves hoped that they would get when they got him from the Orioles and hope to see more of his 24th start overall. Yeah, that's right. The new guy's been pretty good for the Atlanta Braves. Two quality starts for them. Kevin Gossman coming over from the Baltimore Orioles. Now the Marlins did see him back on June 15th in Baltimore. In fact, five and two-thirds innings, five hits, couple earned runs, seven Ks, but he got the loss that day. Marlins are playing pretty good baseball. 31 split fingers, and that's a topic of conversation for tonight's ball game. His first pitch is outside to Ortega. Of course, you will notice as well, this was a change made last time around for Gaussman to work exclusively out of the stretch. For Ortega, three for four last night, a new career high with three hits in last night's ball game. It's a ball outside, two and nothing. Now for Gaussman on the season, lefty's hitting 260, righty's 296. Tries that outside corner again. That one is a called strike. The home plate umpire tonight is Chad Fairchild over at first base. Scott Berry, Carlos Torres at second, and the crew chief Paul Nauert is the third base umpire tonight. Another thing to uh, perhaps keep an eye on tonight with Tyler Flowers behind the plate. I know this has been a storyline throughout the last few weeks. We've seen a lot of the Braves is the ability that he has to present strikes or steal strikes. It all yeah, depends let's use on that what word. side of the line you want to yeah, be let's on. Let's use the word steal. Sure. That one misses outside, and it's a walk for Ortega to lead off the ball game. Nice at bat by Ortega leading off the ball game. All right, Brave New World. As we give you the Auto Nation scouting report of Kevin Gossman. 277 ERA, two starts with the Braves, has not allowed a home run. He's allowed 21 with the Baltimore Orioles. No, by the way, he's ERA 443 and 21 homers allowed. Now, Splitsville, we saw a couple already. Primary, secondary pitch. Throws it right in that 84, 85 mile an hour range. 20. 5% of the time. Hitters are only hitting 175 against it, and 57 of his strikeouts this season have come on that pitch. Now lead the way. Do that in one second here as we see the next pitch to JT. Pass ball to that inside corner. Gossman has struggled. We'll keep our eye on this one all night long with the leadoff hitter in an inning, Paul. He's given up 12 leadoff home runs and a batting average against of 348. That's seventh highest in Major League Baseball. The 12 home runs by far and away the most leading off an inning. Well, not a leadoff home run to Ortega, who is on the move. The throw from Flowers is not in time, and it's a stolen base for Rafael Ortega. Well, keeping the theme that we've seen over the last few ball games, you've got some real opportunity to run. Cosman on the mound tonight. Certainly a large percentage of secondary pitches are going to be thrown. Right on a pretty good pitch. Ball down, good jump, nice slide. He continues to impress with his ability to steal bases. Had his first career game with two stolen bases on Sunday against the New York Mets. Had a steal after a first inning single last night. Real Muto takes the ball inside, two and one to JT. It was two for four last night, had a home run and four RBIs. So perhaps starting to come out of a little bit of a funk that he had been in. His last six games, he is seven for 17, which is a 4-12 batting average, five RBIs, and also four walks. 
soft little liner to second base for out number one. All right, let's get you the Braves defensively for this evening's ball game. Cunha Jr. gets the start in left, and Ciarte in center, Marquecas in right. Culberson making his 13th start of the season at third base. Swanson, Albies, and Freeman. Flowers behind the plate. Now pay attention to the matchup. Flowers has caught now all three of Gossman's starts with the Braves. And here's your number one reason why. He's gotten a called strike on a ball outside the zone 7.4% of the time, 7.4% of the pitches out of the strike zone over the last two years. That's tops in baseball. When Flowers is behind the plate. We seem to talk about this an awful lot. The ability to snatch strikes, to bring them back into the zone. I mentioned that split finger fastball and obviously the improved numbers here with the Atlanta Braves. My personal opinion, it's directly the result of the man behind the plate. Ball and no strikes to the Marlins third baseman tonight. Yes, that's right. Brian Anderson back at third. Haven't seen him there in a while. But uh, if you had missed the first couple of games of this series, in fact, the doubleheader on Monday, each of those two games, the Marlins lost their third baseman. Martin Prado placed on the disabled list with a left quad strain. And Miguel Rojas, who started the nightcap, kind of jammed his, his ankle going into the third base bag. Not on the DL, Miggy. Tried to work things out today. The thought and the hope is that uh, Miguel should be back by Friday, available in a more of a hitting capacity tonight than a, a fielding or pinch running sort of capacity. But nevertheless, it is Brian Anderson back at third. One two pitch on the way is chopped up the third baseline but this will spin foul. Well for Gossman tonight four seen fastballs I mentioned the split he does have a slider. Sometimes you'll see him use the four seen fastball to the top of the zone if he can get ahead of a hitter. He's very vertical for the most part. Likes to throw the splitty that 83 84 85 range and then the fastball up. Up the middle it's a base hit another hit with runners in scoring position for Anderson here is the throw from Enciarte not in time. An RBI single for Brian Anderson, and the Marlins take a 1-0 lead. Yeah, I'll tell you, Brian Anderson had a great swing, last at bat last night, and again, it kind of unlocks what his game is so much about, up the middle the other way. You see it once again with two strikes, shortening up on the bat, putting the ball in play hard. You see it there, 95-mile-an-hour fastball down at the bottom of the zone, but a great swing right back through the box. That is Brian Anderson at his best. An early lead for the Marlins. So the leadoff walk and then the stolen base comes around to score. And the Marlins have a lead in this ball game as Starlin Castro digs in. Now great numbers for Castro against Gossman tonight. A lot of history there obviously with Gossman with the Baltimore Orioles. Starlin a couple seasons there in New York 10 for 30. In fact the Marlins on the whole some good numbers up and down this roster 352 batting average as a team against Gossman coming in. Fouls that one back and it's 0 2. Starlin last night was 1 for 4 at a walk and a stolen base. And he's 2 for 7 in the series. He does enter play a 281 batting average thanks in part to a hit total of 131, which is tied for sixth in the National League. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. Below the zone, one and two. 
was 131 hits for Castro is also second in the National League among second basemen. On the ground, Swanson, Albies to Freeman. But the Marlins get a run on the RBI single for Brian Anderson. One run early to work with for Jose Urania. When we come back, Ronald Acuna Jr. Three straight games with a leadoff homer. Jose trying to put an end to that streak. RBI single from Brian Anderson, but the Braves have been up early thanks to Ronald Acuna Jr. the last few days. Three straight games with a leadoff home run. The two games in the doubleheader on Monday, last night to lead off the ball game, and then bookended the ball game with a three-run home run that helped to put last night's contest out of reach. So he digs in. Jose Urania will try to keep him in the ballpark, and you can already start to sense the buzz. <laughs> And there's pitch number one. And the Braves starting to, a couple of them, make their way out at least to the top step. But I think it's more to get a look. And now here comes a few more. Ender and Ciarte leading the charge. And both benches will empty. Well, it is getting uh, very heated out there. Glove down for Urania. With a pushing and shoving starting. Uh, both fans are getting testy. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, it registered at 97 miles an hour. Looks as Acuna is getting some attention from the Braves medical staff that it may have gotten him in the arm as Dan Straley tries to settle down Urania. Imagine that the Braves would be frustrated if they believe it was intentional. Of course, Acuna has been one of their hotter hitters as of late. He is still down on the ground. He is. He is seated on the ground, getting some medical attention on that left elbow. That's a good view. Well, listen, I'm not going to try to get into Urania's head and assume that he was or he wasn't trying to hit Acuna, but here's the thing. When a guy is as hot as Acuna is, the game plan is to at least make him uncomfortable at the plate, make him move his feet. Well, at the end of the day, I know how it's going to certainly be perceived. I mean, we've talked about Urania all year long in that arm side run. He's got it. I knew he was going to try to go inside. How far in? Who knew? looks you know, to, to anybody who's tuning in for the first time and has watched any part of this series I think probably not surprised that you saw the arm side run the fastball at 97 
And we've seen a number of right-handers this year get hit on that particular pitch. First pitch of the ball game tonight. 97 mile an hour, two seam fastball, arm side run. On the inside part of the plate. Well, <laughs> inside part of the dirt, I should say. Sure. Well, fortunately, on, on either side, you'd hate to see their team lose a player over something like that. I don't think I saw any uh, punches thrown or anything. Doesn't look like there will be any ejections at this point. Warnings, perhaps a whole other ball of wax. Brian Snitker still out there talking with the umpiring crew. As Acuna Jr. is up. The crew chief Paul Nauer in between. Acuna Jr. and Jose Urania. It's a very interesting route he's taking. And he lets the, uh, the arm guard or the shin guard lets it right down on the dirt of the mound. And Brian Snitker still fired up. And looks like we're ready for round two, folks. And relievers didn't even get all the way back, and now we've oh, got a little push. Snicker, Snicker's been tossed. First base coach Eric Young is on fire right now. He is trying to make his way to the middle of the pile. Certainly getting in into the discussion. Energy and emotion starting to take over this situation on the mound. These teams better be careful. It could get really, really testy. Everybody has now congregated just behind the rubber. Like the cooler conversations in the middle, that's certainly what you want to see, but there is definitely some anger on the edges. Snicker was about ready to lose it. He was very, very upset. I'm not sure what was said or what was going on. It was right after the shin guard came off. Snicker has been ejected. Again, I'm not exactly sure if there's been official word of warnings, but my my guess, my hunch, and I very well easily could be wrong, is that he got fired up again after maybe the umpire crew said, okay, now both sides have been warned. I mean, we see this all the time. The team that gets hit would like to have the opportunity to exact their pound of flesh. i got to be honest with you. I just was so curious about the route that Acuna was taking to first base. I mean, it seemed like everything had calmed back down. And that's the hit by pitch, of course, and it looked like it got him in the, the left arm. Maybe right around the elbow or on the tricep area. Again, Acuna Jr. needed a few moments with the uh, training staff to make sure he was okay as both sides got together. Looks like he'll stay in the game. All right, this is what got my attention more than anything. I just thought this was such an odd route. I mean, let's let's pay attention to what's going on here. Now watch, he's going to take the shin guard off and just dumps it on the mound. And I think that kind of uh, kind of got things moving again. Yeah, Snicker just absolutely fired up right there. I'm not sure what, again, we... I, I think, I now I'm, I'm going back on what I thought originally. I think Snicker was more upset with what Urania may have said. And now warnings have, in fact, been issued. And now out comes Don Mattingly. But yeah, initially I thought maybe it was because his team got warm, but watching it again, it looked like Urania may have said something to Acuna Jr. after he had thrown the shin guard. Snicker was right there. He was yelling past the umpiring crew, and now Donnie's a little upset. Now Jose Urania is now coming off the mound. I don't know what's going... has been run. I imagine that's why Don Mattingly is so upset. Well, I'll tell you what, this is, uh, you know, the ejections have now been thought out. I think this is so interesting. I mean, Arrhenia didn't originally get tossed from the ball game. He did about a minute ago. He, in fact, was getting back on the mound, getting ready to get loose, and then was told, you're done. 
I got to admit, I'm a, a bit surprised. I mean, usually when you see it, it's almost instantaneous, like there's a reaction. You certainly assess what's going on, maybe right. the pitch that was thrown. And if you're going to eject somebody, it happens then. Very rarely do you see it where it's, you know, bench is cleared twice. There was time in between. And I mean, what did Jose Ureña do from the second time that the benches came back out on the mound to where we are now? And now they're going to decide that Ureña's done for tonight. Well, again, here, the other element of this whole thing was, again, if it's intentional, then all of this has unfolded in the course of the last three days of Ureña just, uh, or, or rather, Acuna Jr. just being hot. So he's thrown out there. Both sides are warned. And now the crew chief, Paul Nauer, is going over to explain things to the Braves bench. But again, this isn't something that happened six months ago, and maybe the umpire crew wasn't up to speed on it. This is the same umpire and crew that's been here for three days. They've seen that Acuna Jr. has been hot as a firecracker. It's the first pitch of the game. He's hit the first pitch of the game out of the ballpark the last couple of days. They know what was going on. So, again, I'm, I'm with you in that sense of if if you as the umpire and crew assumed that this was going to happen what took it so long well you would have seen you felt like you would have seen it right away and again the, you know the, the thing that continues to get me is the time in between i certainly understand and certainly respect the umpires getting together and making a decision that's what you like to see but at the same time why did it take so long to actually get there urania got back up on the mound started to get loose once again and in fact he may have even thrown a pitch i wasn't necessarily you know all eyes on the mound but we did see a lot of things going on out there that's what got my attention was when Urania got tossed 10 minutes after actually hitting Acuna right yeah there's uh, uh, certainly a lot of things to sort out looks like Don Mattingly still wants to get some sort of an explanation as to you know what's going on or why whatever went on went on but uh, all we know is this is that uh, Immediately, one pitch into this ball game, the Marlins are going into their bullpen right now. Yeah, and that's a, that's a tough place to, play, to be. I, I certainly, like I said, it, very difficult for us to figure out what's going on. I broke it down as best we can. We certainly know Ureña, the type of individual that he is, the type of person that he is. He looks at home plate. It's, he says, it's mine. Home plate is mine. I will fight for inches. We've seen this a number of times throughout his career. First, fit, first pitch fastball, obviously in on Acuna, and I know everybody around the nation is thinking the exact same thing. I can't say that, that that it isn't or that it is, other than to say that we've seen this happen before as far as that arm side run and that explosive fastball that he's got to the inside part of the plate. It gets Acuna. The only argument that I've got really going on here is that Again, usually you see when somebody gets ejected and, and you sense that that was the purpose or the intent that was behind it, it doesn't take long for an umpiring crew to right. pick up on that and then to make it a, an executive decision like they ultimately did while the time in between. Because let's remember, Snitker, you can almost make the case that Snitker almost essentially got ejected because Urania was still on the mound. And that's where I wonder where this all ends up going because Acuna, again, took a, just a very odd route, went from home plate almost out to the mound, then over to first base, dropping his shin guard on the mound. Guess who was still standing on the mound right then? Jose Urania. Urania. Right. And, so, and I noticed the, the crew chief, Paul Nauert, kind of saw what we saw as it was starting to unfold, and he was keeping the, the spot in between right. those two guys just in case, you know, they wanted to exchange words. Well, and I thought that we were getting ready to get going again, and, you know, maybe this plays out. I thought there would obviously be some warnings, but Urania was actually getting ready to get back up on the mound, and he was behind him getting loose right. as Okuna. Cunha walked in front of him. Now, you know, maybe something was said, and again, very difficult for us to know. I mean, we're not <laughs> we're not on the field with everybody else. But the point is, is that a lot has happened here uh, at Centros Park tonight. Rain is out of the ball game. Acuna has been hit by a pitch, and uh, the Marlins are scrambling right now to get their bullpen in line for tonight's ball game. And yeah, we saw moments ago that uh, Eliezer Hernandez had begun throwing. Of course, he'll get as much time as he needs. Uh, he has been a reliever. He has been a starter. Maybe not as stretched out as he once was as a starting pitcher, but it looks like he's going through what would be a typical routine in the bullpen, even though he would have as much time as he needs on the actual mound. I guess that uh, would be my summation of that whole thing, just trying to get a, as much of a routine, as much as a comfort zone as you possibly can. Uh, but again, to go back, and both teams have, have gone off the field. The Marlins have come off the field. Uh, knowing that it may take Eliezer Hernandez a few minutes here. 
if you want to go back to the start of this whole thing again it is because just how hot Ronald Acuna Jr. has been now he comes into this ball game having eight home runs in his last eight games he started the first two games of the doubleheader with leadoff home runs last night a leadoff home run and then a home run later in the ball game as well that basically put it out of reach so again the home runs are certainly creating a buzz around Major League Baseball the headlines all over the place and and rightfully so for this young man. But if you're the Marlins, you know, and we're certainly talking around the cage today, okay, what can you do to make the guy uncomfortable? I said it. I'm, I'm guessing you said it too. Like, listen, you don't want to hit the guy and hurt the guy, but you do want to make him move his feet. We kind of alluded to that as it was even starting. Our Toyota Inside Look shows you all the different ways that Ronald Acuna Jr. has impacted this first place Braves team. But at this point, with a guy this hot, you got to make him uncomfortable to play somehow, some way. Well, and the one thing that I knew, and again, as we opened the broadcast tonight, I kind of alluded to, I've been asked the question a hundred times, it feels like today, what was going to happen at the beginning of the game when Acuna gets into the box? What were we going to see from Urania? The one thing that I would admit to is I, you know, I kind of narrowed it down for most people, although no promises. I knew it was going to be a fastball because it's not in Urania's makeup to come out of the, you know, come out and throw a first pitch slider. It certainly wasn't going to be a first pitch changeup, so you're going to eliminate those two pitches. The one thing that I knew was it was going to be a fastball to the inside part of the plate. The question is, how far inside was it ultimately going to be? And it's about as far inside as you can get. Right, and it also should come as no surprise as Urania, that was his 11th hit by pitch so far this season that is tied for the National League lead. So, again, he likes to command that inside corner, does have that arm side run that Holly has talked about, but uh, a very early one pitch into the game, in fact, Florida Lottery call to the bullpen. We are going to step aside as Eliezer Hernandez has finished the bullpen portion of his warm-up. He will take to the game mound now as we step aside here at SunTrust Park. Jose Urania ejected after hitting Ronald Acuna Jr. 1-0 Marlins. Stay tuned, folks. Marlins lead. Ronald Acuna Jr. has been hit. Jose Arrini has been ejected. So we have a pitching change. This new Monopoly jackpot scratch-offs from the Florida Lottery are a new spin on a classic. They're loaded with prizes from $10,000 to $2 million. So unleash the excitement anytime. The Florida Lottery, it's your ticket. Must be 18 or older to play. Play responsibly. So it is Eliezer Hernandez out of the bullpen. Again, uh, continues to have as much time as he needs taking over for Jose Urania. So just for some bookkeeping, Brian Snitker was ejected by the crew chief, Paul Nauert, and Jose Urania was ejected by the home plate umpire, Chad Fairchild. So there is that. <laughs> Well, Eliezer Hernandez, he's been throwing the ball very well. It's been a few days. He's had some days of rest. You go back to August 12th against the Mets. He did go three innings that day. They needed him to. Didn't walk anybody. In fact, hasn't walked anybody in his last four appearances. So comes into this game throwing the ball pretty well. Obviously, they're hoping to get some uh, innings out of him tonight. 
So Ozzy Albies set to dig in. Acuna Jr. on it first. And it looks like we are ready for some baseball. Oh, yeah, the rest of the Braves starting lineup presented to you by Southwest. You've met Acuna Jr., haven't you? And Albies steps in now. And then you've got Freddie Freeman, Nick Markakis, and a red-hot Charlie Culberson in the three through five spots. So back to baseball here at SunTrust. Hernandez, his first pitch is tapped foul by Albies. Whew. How about that? Good. You set? Did you already shred all your Urania notes? Now we can move on? No, I didn't. I mean, you know me. I, I, I do have plenty of Urania notes, but uh, if anybody's been watching the last half hour, I think we've got a pretty good idea, and it's certainly a tone of what maybe was some, somewhat predictable. Perhaps. This one, a fly ball out to second base. It is Castro. Once that rainmaker comes down, that is the first out. All right, let's go ahead and get you the Marlins defensively to, for tonight's ball game. Yeah, that's right. It's the Deans in left field <laughs> making the start tonight. Sierra in center. Ortega slides over to right. B.A. Brian Anderson at third base. We haven't seen that in a while. Riddle, Castro, Dietrich, and G.T. behind the plate. You know, Austin Dean has been involved in more benches clearing incidents than at bats at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the big league show. Does right. this happen every day? <laughs> Let's hope not. Here is Freddie Freeman. Marlins have had a tough time corralling this guy this year. An all-star as they check on Akumi Jr. That draws raves from the, uh, the booze, rather, from the crowd here at SunTrust. Well, Freddie Freeman, 20 home runs on the season, eight against the Marlins. That one low for ball one. The home run that he hit last night was the equalizer. Braves would tack on more runs and take the third game of this four game series. Yes, 20 home runs, eight have come against the Marlins. Also has 75 RBIs, 16 have come against the Marlins. This line drive, base it in the center field. Even when the ball doesn't leave the ballpark, he has had some terrific numbers against the Marlins this year, improving what was a 439 batting average against Miami. Yeah, it certainly doesn't seem like it's ever long lengthy at bats with Freeman, does it? He, he is the example of what we talked about an awful lot last night, that early count, early approach swing. And the Braves come in as one of the better teams over 370 on that first pitch of an at-bat. like to be aggressive. So two on and one out for Nick Markakis. It's three for 13 in this series, but does have an 11-game hit streak, during which he's hitting 422. Takes the ball outside. Yeah, Marlins fans, you can get used to that theme tonight up and down this Braves lineup. Boy, oh boy, hot hitters everywhere. Two balls and no strikes to the National League hits leader. Mark Akis has 150 of them. So leading the charge in the NL in multi-hit games with 48 of them. Now well, it's been a theme of late for the Atlanta Braves offense. Really good. Lead the National League in runs, home runs, and batting average since July 29th. So just to recap the side story of what happened a few moments ago. Warnings were issued. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that if someone gets hit with a pitch that that pitcher and his manager is automatically ejected from the ball game. The umpires have to deem that there was intent. As Marquecas flies one down the left field line. Dean gives it a look but that went into the seats. Two balls and two strikes. Sometimes that gets lost in in the shuffle sometimes by fans. A guy gets hit by a pitch with a, a changeup, right? With <laughs> second and third right. in a one run game in the eighth inning and everybody loses it. Mm -hmm. 
2 2 to Markakis. Off the inside corner, count runs full. Cunha Jr. on at second, Freeman at first. Payoff pitch to Markakis. Lifted out to left field. And Austin Dean has his first major league put out, two away. You'll see Austin Dean at the plate coming up in the top of the second inning. He'll be due up second behind Derek Dietrich. Here is Charlie Culberson. Three for eight in the series with a home run. He went back to back on the second pitch of the game last night. Back to back home runs his ninth of the season. Back in there tonight to give Johan Camargo a day off and that is really how deep this Braves team is right now. Camargo leads the team with 41 RBIs since the beginning of June. He gets the night off and you go to Charlie Culberson who is 10 for 22 with four doubles and eight RBIs against the Marlins this year. Culberson's got five home runs since the All-Star break. I mean, he's getting tremendous production up and down this lineup and when Culberson's in there they really don't miss it. It's not like it's a step back. Braves two games up on the Philadelphia Phillies in the National League East. Phillies at the moment already down three nothing hosting the Boston Red Sox that game in the third. And a called strike three on the outside corner so Hernandez doesn't start the inning but he does finish it and will meet Austin Dean when we come back. Paul Severino, Todd Hollinsworth back with you. The Marlins with a 1-0 lead thanks to a Brian Anderson RBI single. Jose Urania started for the Marlins. He has since been ejected from this ballgame after hitting Ronald Acuna Jr. So we play on to the second. It'll be Derek Dietrich, Austin Dean in his Major League debut, and J.T. Riddle against Kevin Gosman, who sat for roughly a half an hour or so with all the theatrics in that bottom of the first inning. Time is called. Gosman will step off. And it looks like out in left field, Ronald Acuna Jr. is making his way to the Braves dugout. They've been hitting that left arm, which is now wrapped with what looks like a uh, 
compression sleeve. Now well, that's unfortunate for the young man, no doubt. Well, after he had gotten hit, again, the uh, medical staff was with him for a good three, four minutes. And he tried to gut it out. He's on the bases the rest of that half inning. Tried to gut it out. And uh, before Gosman could even throw a pitch, realizing it just wasn't, wasn't going to work. Again, hopefully it's just a little soreness. And nothing any more serious well, than that. That's certainly what you hope for for this young man. He's an incredible athlete. He's incredible brave. I know he is really upset about what went down, and understandably, it certainly is justified. You certainly don't want to see him miss any time, and uh, this Braves team is trying to win themselves a pennant. Well, to your point, you hope that it's uh, maybe just today and he can get back out there against the Rockies tomorrow. Well, if we get any further word on that, we'll be sure to pass that along. Acting manager Walt Weiss, the one making the change. So it is Adam Duvall out in left field. And once again, we attempt to play on. Duvall makes his way out to left field. And the uh, security now being waved off the field. So OK, onward and upward. So Dietrich steps back in. He was 0 for 5 last night, 0 for 9 in the series. Does have seven hits and three RBIs against the Braves this year. Swings at the first pitch. Right into the glove of Flowers, 0 and 1. Three Braves on the right side of the infield against the lefty Dietrich. So Duvall, who was added from the Cincinnati Reds, takes over and left. He is two for 18 with the Braves. In there for a called strike. Again, anything on the edges tonight with Tyler Flowers behind home plate has a chance of being a called strike. Yeah, and you also look at the arsenal that Gossman features with the split finger, the slider, little arm side run on the changeup, or excuse me, on the fastball, that four seamer. And he's very good. That's what he does best. I can't help but you know, pick up on that. I know his uh, splitty average against at 179 coming in, it's down to 133. Of course, it's a small sample size. He's only been here for two starts, but that tells me Flowers has got that you know incredible ability to take pitches outside the zone to bring them back. And when you've got that going, pitchers certainly want to make pitches off the plate. Sharply hit up the middle. A leadoff base hit for Derek Dietrich. Marlins have had the leadoff runner on in both innings, and that will bring up Austin Dean. Getting set for his first major league plate appearance. Marlins have had a few of these big league debuts the last couple of weeks. It's been nice to see, certainly moments these guys will never forget. Here in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, it was Isaac Galloway, and tonight it is Dean. 24-year-old, and his mom Bonnie is here as well. I'm sure she's not nervous at all. <laughs> Excited and nervous for him. You work your entire life for this one moment. He's been a, putting together a pretty incredible season down in AAA. 345 average. OPS well over 900. A little time in AA this year, too, as the Southern League Player of the Month. This time in Jacksonville at 326 with New Orleans. As you mentioned, the open was hitting 465 in 11 games in August. Thanks in part to a six game hit streak. So the Marlins rewarding him. A chance to play at the next level and also hope that he can provide a little spark for this offense. He's got 
had a very simple approach at home plate. A real nice round of batting practice today, kind of spraying the ball all around the field. Obviously, good good power to left left center field. And sends it out to center field in Ciarte. Two steps in front of the track will make the play, and back to first goes Dietrich. All right, one at bat under his belt. He's a season vet now. seriousness congratulations to Austin Dean again a fourth round pick of the Marlins back in 2012 the corresponding move there was Christopher Bostic sent back down to AAA here's JT Riddle the Marlins shortstop is looking to get the bat going he's had a Tough time in August, three for 29 with three walks. So I'm working on some stuff in the cage yesterday, focusing on his hands with Frank Minichino. Strikes with Dietrich away from first. Last time out for Gosman, we mentioned eight innings, six hits, a run, no walks, and eight strikeouts. It was his home debut after the deadline deal with the Baltimore Orioles. It was the ninth time in his career that he'd gone eight innings. It's the fourth time this year. He certainly has the ability to work deep into a ball game. The question is how much of that arsenal, you know, how many pitches is he using up early? Here we are on the top of the second inning, only one out. He's 30 pitches, almost 30 pitches. This will be the next one. And behind, 2 0. Oh. Well, falling behind was uh, not something he did much of last time out. First pitch strike to 18 of the 23 batters that he faced through the first six innings of work. Against the Milwaukee Brewers. Tonight, a relatively even split through the first 30. As Riddle takes a called strike on the outside corner, three and one. have two on after the second walk of the night issued by Gosman. Arrive early to Marlins Park on Saturday, August 25th and receive a Players Weekend jersey presented by Pepsi at the gates. Visit Marlins.com slash giveaways to purchase your tickets today. Always a fun weekend. Jerseys love the nicknames. Uh, that's right. The jerseys are a little bit of a different look, too. Some fun colors. Cool thing that Major League Baseball has instituted the last couple of years. Two on and one out for Magnioris Sierra. Takes a ball low. Sierra, a couple of hits yesterday. Two runs scored, had a stolen base. Would like to see him get on base a little bit more in order to utilize that speed, and get some steals, be active on the bases. Another thing they'd certainly like to do to see is maybe tighten up the plate discipline a little bit too. Chasing a few pitches.
the ballpark that he made his major league debut in last year in May when he came up with the St. Louis Cardinals. Played a game here and then uh, played some games in Miami. Part of that Cardinals franchise record run that he was on a nine game hit streak to begin his career. Fielders on the mind. Lewis Brinson, Double A Jacksonville, began his rehab assignment yesterday. Inside, count full. With the 20th pitch of the inning. For Kevin Gosman. Sierra lines one out to left field. That is Duval for out number two. Yeah, good swing of the bat by Sierra. Right at Duval. Bring up Eliezer Hernandez, of course, hitting in the spot that was Jose Urania's, lasted only a pitch tonight. 97 miles an hour in the arm of Ronald Acuna Jr., who stayed in the game at the time, has since left the game. A first pitch strike from Gosman. Mentioned the fact that he was very efficient last time out against the Brewers. Only 11 pitches were out of the strike zone last time out. Well, he is definitely. Struggling with his command tonight. The pace of this game has come to a screeching halt. Obviously, things at the beginning of this ball game kind of set it all back, but Gossman very deliberate between pitches right now. Set for a 1 2 pitch to Hernandez on a couple of hops to Albies. Threw a ton of pitches in that inning, but the Marlins come across with nothing. Lead it 1 0.
so you have had an up close and personal view of his baseball journey. Now, Sarah, when we talked to Austin earlier today, he said you were the first person that he called to talk to about his promotion. What was your response when you got that phone call? I immediately started crying. I just, I put him on speakerphone anyway to talk to him, but I just, I broke down and started crying immediately. I did I had no words. I, I've just been so proud of him. It's what he's worked for his whole life. And I, I mean, he's deserved this for a long time and it's just a long time coming. Now he said today, yes, there's gonna be a little bit of nerves, but I'm mostly excited. How about you? How are you holding up right now? Um, I'm just more emotional than anything. I mean, every tweet I've read, I mean, everything I've seen today, I've cried. I mean, he came out of the dugout and I got to see him right before the game started and I started crying. He came out of the dugout um, just to run out to left field. I started crying. He <laughs> came out to bat and I started crying. So, I mean, I'm just really emotional. I'm really proud of him and I'm just so happy for him to finally make it and get to achieve all of his dreams and his goals. What did it what was it like trying to get here to make it for his debut? I mean, as soon as we got off the phone so he could call his parents, I booked my flight. I mean, it was within seconds. I didn't care how much it cost. I, it, that price didn't matter. I was like, no, done. It, it didn't matter. It didn't take very long because I was, it didn't, price, if you couldn't put a price on me being here right. today, so. Well, we're glad that you made it. Congratulations to Austin and you for you. being a part of that journey too. I know he said you have encouraged him, you have grounded him, you have been there for every step of this opportunity to get here. So thank you so much for your time. Guys, back to you. Well, oh, guys, thank you so much. Yeah, of course, that uh, that was the first thing I asked him too as this one has rolled to second base off the bat of Enciarte was, who was your first phone call when you found out? And he said, my girlfriend. And then I called my parents. I said, all right, we'll, we'll work around that. But, uh, <laughs> she, she, I think she'll sleep well tonight. She's, she's glad that's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, it is amazing to see that kind of the behind the scenes, those who are, are the ones that are you know, pushing the ball players along, too, the ones that, uh, that oh, are wearing man. the uniforms. That's a, that's a conversation we could honestly talk hours about what goes into getting here. Um, Dean, well-deserved. I mean, we give you the numbers. We say he earned it. You know, that's the easy way out. We try to condense it and get it all into one game. But you have no idea the bus trips, the airplane rides, the travel, the early hours, the late hours, the grind between Dean Ortega and Galloway, uh, excuse me, Galloway and Bostic, all recently called up players to the Marlins. 3,412 minor league games. 12,657 combined at bats. Wow. So he deserves it is uh, it's, it's an understatement. It's a, it's a tip of the hat. It's a pat on the back the perseverance that they have all displayed in getting here. Yeah. And again all different journeys to get to this moment to get to this level. But uh, for all the good, I'm sure that, it, listen, baseball is a game of failure. The guys who hit 300 failed seven times out of every 10. As Flowers sends one out to the aforementioned Ortega. Again, I'm sure there's so many frustrations along the way as well. Marlins fans, you can stream games live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go, presented by Coors Light. Download the app and take Fox Sports Florida and Marlins Baseball wherever you go. Dansby Swanson, nobody on and two out here in the bottom of the second inning. Back to the netting, 0-1. Swanson one for seven in the series. Curious to see how long Eliezer Hernandez has tonight. A day off tomorrow. Swanson did go around. It's 0-2. Six for 30 this year. Seven runs scored. A home run and six RBIs against the Marlins. With 
Braves shortstop takes the ball low and away one and two. Strike three. That will end the second. Second strikeout for Hernandez. One nothing Marlins through two. And Southwest Airlines are giving you an all an opportunity to enter for a chance to win an all-inclusive stay in Nassau in the Bahamas on Labor Day weekend for the Southwest Airlines Summer Days Getaway. Just tweet hashtag Southwest Summer Days Sweeps and hashtag sponsor to at Fox Sports FL for your chance to win. To the top of the third. And the top of the order for the Marlins. Ortega, Real Muto, and Anderson. Don Mattingly down a starter with Jose Urania out after one pitch. Stay tuned for the Marlins Live postgame show to hear from the skipper. Get his reaction as to what happened, what was said with the umpires. Well, brutal set of circumstances, either way you look at it. Certainly hope that Acuna is all right. Because I'll tell you what, that's the one thing that really stinks. That kid was playing some great baseball, and you certainly don't want to see that that stop. Obviously, had to leave the ball game tonight under any circumstances. Ortega takes ball one. He walked in the first inning, stole second base, and came around to score on the Anderson RBI single. Ortega has been impressive over his last few ball games on base four times. Well, we've talked about this in the last few days, just trying to figure out the right recipe right now. Of course, this Marlins offense looks a little bit different now than maybe it did three or four weeks ago. Trying to figure out the right recipe for how to work things out from the top of the lineup. Who's going to be in that top spot? We've seen JT Real Muto, Brian Anderson flip flop. We've seen BA. In the four spot, he's the hit number three today. We got cash through the four. A lot of moving parts the last couple of weeks for Don Mattingly. Well, you're trying to get an offense hot once again. They've struggled in the month of August. Here, looking into your farm system, hoping to bring up some answers, give some players some opportunity. Ortega has so far so good capitalized on his opportunity. He's been a bit of a spark plug atop the lineup, and putting together good at bats. Stealing bases. 
waited all season to <laughs> talk about a few stolen bases. Yeah, I mean, that was one thing that we talked about in the spring, kind of looking at how this team was going to make up for some of the lost power from this past offseason. And it was going to be about creating runs, creating chaos on the infield, moving guys. But you have to get them on first. Well, and that's the other thing that if, you know, you're not having enough base runners, hard to allow the few that you had especially early on in the season you know in motion you don't want to roll the dice that you know the seven or eight base runners that the Marlins were getting when the team was struggling just a bit out of the gates back in April to run so it's taking a little bit of time to develop that part of their game you know, starting to hit once again love to see them putting guys in motion to the third base bag and foul territory it is Culberson for the first out in the third. Now that's 50 pitches for Gaussman as JT Realmuto steps in. JT's home run last night was his first since deadline day July 31st which was actually here in Atlanta. Day off tomorrow, and then it's in Washington, D.C. at Nationals Park on Friday night. Dan Straley gets the ball for the Miami Marlins. I don't think the Nationals acquired anybody named TBA as Will Mito hits one sharply to Freeman. Kind of do the math and look at it. The Nationals have not announced a starter, but it would most likely be Max Scherzer. Someone whom the Marlins have had some luck against this year. And not many teams have. He's no TBA. He is no TBA. <laughs> He's more TCB. He <laughs> takes care of business out of the mound. I was actually thinking more like CY. <laughs> Could be that too. But as for right now, no official starting pitcher for Friday for the Nationals. But the Marlins will have Straley on the bump Friday night, the first of a three-game set. But first, they try to get out of Atlanta with a win and put an end to what has been a 10-game road losing streak. Brian Anderson has done his part in the early going with an RBI single back in the first. Picked up his 40th hit with runners in scoring position this season. This one foul territory. Freeman will not have enough room. And the RBI single came off the bat at 104 miles an hour. This is the most hard hit balls this season in the National League. Nick Markakis at the top of that list. Yelich and Ozuna, and then Brian Anderson with his 157th hard hit ball. That's 95 miles an hour or more off the bat. And this day and age of being able to measure exit velocity, you don't get any awards for leading the league in exit velocity, but as a ball player, you certainly know that you hit the ball hard, you have a better chance of getting the hits. Anderson had a hit in the first to get his average up to 280. This one on the couple of hops to Swanson at short makes the off balance throw to get Anderson. And the Marlins go down 1 2 3 in the third, but have a 1 0 lead.
speed heading to the bottom of the third. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Miami Marlins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts or descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Paul Severino, Todd Hollinsworth, Jessica Blaylock back with you here at SunTrust Park. Kevin Gosman, for 15 in his career, does have three walks. Will lead things off for the Braves. And then the top of the order, Adam Duvall in the top spot now with Ronald Acuna Jr. out of the game and Ozzy Albies to follow. And that one's going to get down in front of Dean. So Kevin Gosman has his first big league hit. Well, Gossman gets a fastball away and takes it away, lines it into left field for his first major league hit. Certainly a big moment for him. <laughs> He's over at first base with a big smile on his face. <laughs> a little handshake from EY. <laughs> He's happy for him. Dietrich will hold him on as Adam Duvall gets his first at bat. Came in at the beginning of the second inning, right after Gosman had thrown his warm up tosses and was uh, ready to go. But then Acuna Jr. called time as we uh, take a look at Kevin Gosman's first big league hit. Got a little sticker or marking to authenticate his first big league hit. So yeah, Cunha Jr. came off the field right before the second inning started. Still no word yet on his condition, but uh, Duvall took over. And Hernandez down on the count, 3-0 and oh to Duvall. Now Don Mattingly said a few days ago, maybe last week or so, that Elias Hernandez may start before season's end. It, uh, it's kind of hard for him to develop pitches in the bullpen role that he's been in as he tries to continue to mature as a pitcher. And this, of course, not a start technically, but figures to get some, some form of, uh, of run here. Lengthy outing, perhaps. Three and one to Duvall. Down the left field line, but this one will get into the seats. Long, loud, strike two. Well, I've just been informed, of course, Acuna had to leave the ball game, hit by a pitch to start the game. Fly by high fly ball into right field. Out number one. His streak is still active, even though he had to leave the game. All right, don't miss the hottest matchup of the summer. Catch the Marlins as they take on the Yankees August 21st and August 22nd. Just the Yankees' first visit to Marlins Park since 2015. Get your tickets today at Marlins.com/tickets. Ozzie Albies, one on and one out. There's a called strike to Albies, who popped up to Castro back in the first inning. Of course, that streak he, Holly's talking about is the five straight games with a homer for Acuna, the youngest player ever to hit home runs in five straight games. That will pick up right where he left off, despite leaving tonight's ball game. I believe that's rule 9.23 in the rule book. Could be. Somewhere in that range. <laughs> I'm the passer of information, not the knower of the information. <laughs> this went into the glove of Riddle for out number two. Freddie Freeman. Believe it or not, Freddie Freeman a base hit in his first trip. He 
is now 26 of 58 against the Marlins this year. I mentioned the eight home runs that he's got as well. The last Braves player with at least eight single season home runs against an opponent was Andrew Jones. Eight homers against Washington in 2007. This one will not get out. It will stay up for Sierra, who's able to make the play. We are through three at SunTrust Park. Marlins up, one nothing. Away, a 1 0 Marlins lead in the last of this four game set. Time for Hats Off for Heroes, presented to you by T Mobile. Craig Stamina of the San Diego Padres, a volunteer at the Walter Reed Medical Center, and hosts Defending the Baselines for Military Kids. And uh, of course, speaking of Walter Reed, Marlins will be going there uh, later this week as we get to the nation's capital following tonight's ball game. Nice to uh, certainly walk in there and, and say thanks to those who have paid a price Absolutely. for our freedom. Absolutely. That's Walt Weiss, the acting manager tonight of the Atlanta Braves, as Brian Snitker has been ejected from this ball game. Both teams have been warned from all of the histrionics from the first inning. As Ronald Acuna Jr. has Homer in five straight games, three straight leadoff home runs against the Marlins in this series, was hit with a 97 mile an hour fastball from Jose Urania on the first pitch of the game. Acuna's been ejected, Snicker's been ejected, and Acuna has left with an injury. And I think what's so interesting, not to bring this back up, continue it all game long, of course, it's going to be the number one storyline with Acuna, the hottest man on the planet. Very curious what happened that second round out on the mound. Inside to Starlin Castro, and then it's Derek Dietrich and Austin Dean. Castro grounded into a inning ending double play in the first. South Florida Honda Dealers present Marlins Live, the pregame show Friday. 6.30, Craig Minervini and Jessica Blaylock live from Nationals Park. It'll be Dan Straley and, in all likelihood, Max Scherzer. As Castro sends one out to right field, and that oh. one is gone just enough to get over that wall in right field, over the head of Markakis, his 10th, and it's 2-0. 
Well, Starling Castro came in with some outstanding numbers against Gossman. We warned you in the Auto Nation scouting report. Well, we didn't warn you. We just tried to point it out. Lead the way, right? This is the third time the Marlins lead off man essentially on base. Of course, Castro gets the walk all the way around. That is the 13th home run. Gossman has surrendered to the first batter of an inning. Great swing. Drives it out over that right field wall. Holds up 2 0. Braves fans have thrown that home run ball back on the field. Yeah, there's definitely an edge in the ballpark tonight. Hence the delay. Yes. Yeah, it's certainly, uh, certainly we're feeling it. I, I know that uh, everybody else is feeling it as well. It's in the ballpark tonight. Everything that kind of went down in the first inning. Certainly understandable. Great swing, great approach, good extension. Saw it away, up away, drove it out. Just enough. Dietrich with a single back in the second inning. First hit in this series. Chases that one low. But it's a ball and two strikes. Yeah, that's a pretty good look at the Gossman split finger. And Austin Dean making his major league debut tonight. Waits in the on deck circle. Ten home runs this year for Starlin Castro. Every year of his big league career, he has gotten to ten home runs or more. The lone exception, three homers in 125 games in 2010. Took him a while. Remember that? We were chasing that for what seemed like a month. That his first home run this season was going to be number 100. Now up to 109. Dietrich right side Albies spins throws and gets him by a step for out number one. It's easy to beat the heat when you become an energy saving expert. Go to FPL.com slash beat the heat. So here's Austin Dean. Fly ball out to Center field in his first at bat. Those are his numbers between double A and triple A. 12 homers, 68 RBIs. He had a hit in 18 of his last 21 games for New Orleans. He's hitting 420 over that stretch. So I'm assuming you don't feel your feet on the ground in your first big league at bat. What about the second? A little better? Life is going pretty fast. No, it's going to go pretty quick for a little while. You want to get that first hit out of the way. You want to get to first base. You know, you may calm down in the box, let's say, from one at back to the second at bat, but you get a base hit, you get over to first base, it just kind of ramps right back up again. You know, and then you start worrying about getting picked off and guys throws over to first. Like, you think of everything that, well, at least I did anyway. <laughs> All the bad things that could potentially happen. Like you're in the minor leagues, like you get aggressive. You're like, you know, you're not worried about it. You just kind of challenge the game and see where you can take it. And up here, you're like, you know, players at times, I think early on, you realize you try not to make a mistake. And I think that's the one thing that, uh, you know, players probably battle the most. The Austin Dean fan club. They're anticipating hit number one coming right here. That's right. Two balls and two strikes from Gosman. 
This might be it. Culberson will make the play. Barehanded throw. The only play that he had was to barehand it, throw in one motion. And Dean is retired. Now, one thing that you learn coming from the minor leagues to the big leagues, one thing that really does change the defense. You're talking the best defenders in the world play at this level. And even when it's not your regular third baseman, you still get a pretty special defensive play. Look at Culberson, all in one motion, underhand, across the diamond. Get Dean by a step. So now two outs for JT Riddle, who walked in his first plate appearance. One of two walks issued by Gosman. This one on the first pitch lines it out to center field. And Ciarte makes the play through three and a half here at SunTrust Park. The Marlins have themselves a 2 nothing lead thanks to a Starlin Castro solo home run. Going the other way on Kevin Gosman. Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Southwest Transparency Low Fares, nothing to hide. The Cleveland Clinic, stiff joints, aches and pains, trust Cleveland Clinic Florida, the number one orthopedic care in Florida. And by Simply Healthcare, live the Simply Life. Back here at SunTrust Park, Marlins a 2-0 lead, RBI single for Brian Anderson, and a solo home run for Starlin Castro. And a new pitcher for the Marlins as Harlan Garcia comes in after a couple of innings of work for three innings of work that is for Eliezer Hernandez. So Garcia will face Nick Marcakis, Charlie Culberson and Ender Inciarte in his 18th game this season. Seen him a handful of times since being recalled as he delivers a strike to Marcakis. Harlan Garcia pitched in game one of the doubleheader a couple days ago. A couple of innings, three hits, turn run, a couple strikeouts. Well, throwing the ball pretty well out of the bullpen so far. Good combination, fastball, slider, occasional change up to the right handed hitters. Fastball command, much better. I do remember the story of Harlan? Early on was just absolutely outstanding early in the season and then hit a rough patch and instead of missing starting off those corners he was missing more towards the middle of the plate he was getting hit hard back down to triple A and since his return he's, he's been pretty good. Marquez sends it out to deep center field but playable for Sierra the first down here in the fourth. Now not a bad three innings of work for Eliezer Hernandez. Gives up a couple of hits, gets a couple of strikeouts. 
we've seen a, a bit of an uptick in the velocity as well from Eliezer Hernandez. It, it may seem like not so much, but I had peeked at it a few days ago and I failed to bring it up. But in May, his four seam fastball was at 90.99. By August, as Culberson lines one to left center field, and that's going to hit the base of the wall. A double for Culberson. Tell you what, Paul, it's pretty amazing to me. We've watched this Braves team all season long. It's the Marlins' last game tonight at SunTrust Park. And the Braves have handled business here, 7 1 against the Marlins. That early at bat approach, that first pass ball, and, and so many great swings. A lot of times, you know, you watch teams that, that do that, and they'll have stretches where, you know, it's working, and then they'll have the stretches where that aggressive approach is a lot of early outs. That has not happened yet for the Braves this season. They have maintained that aggressive approach early in the count, and the results have continued to follow it. Here's Inciarte. Ciarte ground out back in the second inning. Just to finish my thought on Eliezer Hernandez, from May to the early part of August, he's added a, a mile an hour to the fastball. So a little extra get up has uh, perhaps led to a little more effectiveness out of the Marlins pen. He gets into the fourth. And to Urania threw one pitch. He was ejected. And now it's Garcia working in the fourth inning. Behind 2 and 0, oh, runner goes. Here's the throw. A good jump for Culberson gets him to third with one out. Well, Culberson got himself about a good four or five step jump. Even with the lefty in the box, which is very unusual. You don't see too many base runners really willing to roll the dice. And you see JT Ramirez got a clean shot to third, but the jump was so big by Culberson. JT really no opportunity to throw him out. There's certainly been an added uh, aggressiveness for this uh, Braves team this year. When you see it at the plate on the first or second pitch of an at bat, on the bases. And now Dietrich will have only one play. That ball was chopped with just enough air underneath it for Culberson to read it and come home on the RBI ground out. It's two to one. Yeah, they still have a one run lead, but each team has essentially created a run by stealing a base, putting themselves in position. This ground ball to the right side on 3 1 pitch by Enciarte. It's Culberson across the plate. So two outs for Tyler Flowers. Fly ball out to Ortega in his first at bat. Even Flowers has himself a hit in four straight games. So Garcia having to deal with the, the hot Braves offense. Varying temperatures, but uh, everybody seems to be somewhat hot here for the Braves. Start your day with first things first. Join Chris Carter, Nick Wright, and Jenna Wolf for the best morning. Sports show on television. First things first, weekdays on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Your morning routine just got a whole lot more fun. Here's Dansby Swanson. One on and two out. The steal of third, by the way, for Culberson was the tenth steal of third base for the Atlanta Braves this year. At the start of the day, the Milwaukee Brewers leading baseball with 22. Very, very aggressive. Now, that, a steal of third is often stolen on the pitcher, just not looking the runner back oftentimes, right? 
Absolutely. Swanson, center field, Sierra at the wall. And it's a two-run home run for Dansby Swanson. Dead center field, and the Braves are in front. Two out runs. Yeah, I was going two out lightning. So you you were gonna go runs, I'm gonna go with the sure. lightning, right? Yeah, we've seen this story told way too many times. And there's Dansby Swanson, 1-0 fastball, center cut, thigh high, all over it, drives it out over the center field wall. The Atlanta Braves have retaken the lead. Here's that swing one more time. Pretty good balance, stays back, keeps the hands back. Extension through. Gosman rolls one to Castro, and the inning is over. But the Braves score three, and they have taken a one-run lead. Hey, earlier today I had a chance to explore the battery a little bit. There are great restaurants. There's a movie theater. There is also a very cool, very custom Harley Davidson on display. Take a look at this because it is absolutely beautiful. This is a 2002 Heritage Soft Tail Springer. You've got players airbrushed by hand as part of the design. You just saw Chipper Jones. Hank Aaron is also on that Harley. But one of the coolest parts about it has got to be that seat. You can see it right there. It is made with Terry Pendleton's last gold glove and a game used ball. Guys, unfortunately, it is not for sale. You are going to have to take the plane to DC. You sure? Can you get a ride on that thing? I've never ridden a motorcycle in my life. Have you? Nope. You want Moped. To? Moped? Not a motorcycle. No, thought about that. About a uh, year, year and a half into marriage, that got shot down real quick. <laughs> we, we, we need you around here. A, Somebody's got to change the light bulbs. I think take the garbage out. Mars, what do you think about a motorcycle? Just the look, and that was all I needed. <laughs> Wives are good at that, aren't they? They are. They're fantastic. Oh, they have that look. You know, you you just turn into a debate or a question. No, no, no. There's no back and forth. Just the yeah. look, and you're like, okay, moving on. Yeah. Speaking of moving on, Marlins need to move on and score a few more runs in this ball game. See if they can't get out of Atlanta with a win. Well, McNairis Sierra leads off. Miguel Rojas is on deck. We had mentioned uh, the other night, Monday, the nightcap of that doubleheader. And he was on base. 
and uh, went to third, kind of jammed his foot into the bag, and then he would be available at least in pinch hitting duties tonight. So it looks like that's going to be the case. You saw Javi Guerra up, so maybe just one inning of work for Harlan Garcia. Ball and a strike to Sierra. Out to Marquecas in right field in a few steps for out number one. So it will be Miguel Rojas. Certainly good to see that he is uh, available and feeling good. <laughs> well, Miggy Rowe has been swinging the bat pretty well of late, and well, he was trying to up his speed game on, on the bases. That's how he ended up hurting his ankle was a slide into third base. He tried to test the arm of Acuna a little bit earlier in the series, and uh, it didn't go so well. Does have a hit and four at bats in the series. He is 15th in the National League when it comes to line drives. He's 92 line drives. His line drive percentage that is a little shy of 28 percent. This is one right here. Find out for our number two. Yeah, Thank you. Coming up. Geico presents this day in Major League history, Felix Hernandez, a guy who at one point in time, it seemed like every time he took the mound, there was a chance of a perfect game. And on this day in 2012, he achieved it. 23rd perfect game. Earlier this week, he was placed in the bullpen. Last night, James Paxton gets hit with a comebacker and boom, right out of the pen. Here's Felix Hernandez, perhaps right back into the rotation. Pitch pretty good. There's Ortega with a line drive. That's going to go off the wall. Marquecas comes up throwing, and the throw right on the money to keep Ortega at first. Yeah, that's knowing your ballpark. Great swing by Ortega. Continues to swing hot bat on base now. Second time tonight. Great swing. Hands back. Good extension. And as I said, drives it off the wall. Marquecas did not pursue this all the way into the corner. Knew he wasn't going to catch it. In fact, just put himself in position to field it off the wall, and that's why you don't run. He's got six outfield assists. Yeah, he's just a little bit behind Brian Anderson. Ortega, great read all the way. Forces that throw coming hard around first base, but the right thing to do. So one on two out for JT Real Muto. Hit balls tonight for JT. Both to the right side of the infield, but nothing to show for it in the hit Pitch for Gosman will be number 80. At 97 miles an hour. Gave up a run in the first through 18 pitches. Left two on base in the second through 25. Kitchen coach Sal Fazzano there on the right side. Certainly working with 
Tyler Flowers who we've talked about earlier in this ball game about being able to present or steal strikes. Two Ortega goes. Real Muto swings and misses, and that'll do it for the top of the fifth inning. Marlins down a run here at SunTrust Park. Welcome back to some students, the Marlins today, along with Billy the Marlin, Charles Johnson, the Mermaids, all uh, helping to welcome some kids back to school, Tropical Elementary School and Lauder Hill 6-12 to 12 STEM Med Magnet School in Brower, uh, Broward County had a, uh, a very special welcome back. You go there, you want to see your buddies for the first time in a few months, and then boom, some Marlins are there too. Not a bad way to uh, welcome you back. See CJ, yeah, it's Absolutely. pretty sweet right there. <laughs> pretty excited to go to school that day. Yeah, usually kids are, you know, maybe not so thrilled with that first day yeah, back. Yeah, my guys were struggling with it a little bit. <laughs> I know my guys were okay, really? okay. Yeah, sure, if I have to. CJ sweetens the deal, doesn't exactly, he? Exactly, exactly. Javi Garrett takes over as Adam Duvall gets a piece of that one. So Garrett, the fourth Marlins pitcher tonight. Again, Urania threw a pitch. And hit Acuna Jr. Dust up. Benches cleared twice in the course of five or ten minutes. Urania was ejected. Acuna Jr. has since left the game. Three innings from Eliezer Hernandez, an inning from Garcia, and now Guerra, who was ahead 0-2 to Duvall, who replaced Acuna Jr. Statcast AI is powered by AWS, the Distribution of balls in play on the ground on the infield off the bat of Adam Duvall. That's why Anderson, Riddle, and Castro are on the left side. Well, certainly with two strikes. No need. Guerra able to go to the top of the zone at 94. Pick up the first out of strikeout. Here the fifth. And the Marlins have the day off tomorrow. So we'll see just how much they empty the bullpen tonight. Having gotten but one pitch from their starter, Jose Urania. Albies 0 for 2 tonight. A couple of pop ups on the infield one to second, one to short. In the air to right field, Ortega 
for the second out. Guerra is going to continue to be efficient. He may give uh, the Marlins an inning or two here. Or two or more, I should say. Here's Freeman now. And again, the umpires have to deem intent with both sides having been warned. It's got nothing to do with uh, a player being hit by a pitch. That the uh, pitcher and manager would get ejected. You don't think the Marlins would be in position to take it any farther than where it's already gone tonight. There's no doubt. You saw where JT Rio Muto was setting up, and that fastball just got away. And game on. Here's Mark Kankis. The Florida Lottery in-game jackpot. Driving in teammates. How about this? Marquecas and Freeman 25 times. One better than the duos of Arenado, Blackman, Martinez, and Betts. Jose Ramirez and Francisco Lindor. You know what I see when I look at that list of, uh, what would that be, eight players? Some MVP candidates. Yeah. Quite a few of them. And uh, some playoff teams. Quite a few of those, too. Braves will welcome in the Rockies starting tomorrow. That series should have some juice. Well, you'd think so, and I certainly hope that uh, Acuna, Acuna is back for it. Think of all the circumstances tonight, and as hot as he's been, he has been a big part of this offense. As soon as we get a report, we certainly will let you know the status of Acuna. Kek is 0 for 2 tonight, has that 11 game hit streak. This one toward Anderson at third will make the play. Guerra works around the two out hit by pitch. We're through five. For baseball this afternoon at Wrigley Field. Anthony Rizzo going the other way and just enough to get out. Now behind that brick wall with the Ivy is the Cubs bullpen. So the fans that were in the ballpark going nuts didn't see the game of Duck Duck Goose that broke out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't think uh, 
I don't think a team has more fun in its bullpen than the Chicago Cubs. It's encouraged, and I think that's what's so much fun. You know, this generation of players, I certainly love uh, so many of these exciting young we, – we've seen it here. We see it all over the National League East. Great yeah. young players certainly impacting the game. They have fun there, and I think that's uh, – the best part about it is that even in the bullpen, as silly as it seems, we may right. laugh at it. Some people may out there say, well, that's childish. You know what? They're having fun, and I think that's the key ingredient. It's a long season, and these are the dog days of oh, August. You get – you know, this time of year, you get so surly as a player just because, I mean, good, bad, indifferent. You know, you're 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 past 120 games. Right. The end is somewhat in sight. These games matter as much as they matter for most teams, you know, it, it, you know, as they move towards September and you're trying to dig deep and you probably, you know, you dropped a few pounds, you're a little bit tired and you're trying to get things accomplished. It can be a very stressful time of year. Dropped a few pounds. Oh, I feel like man. I'm gaining some pounds. Well, I wasn't talking about you. Oh, <laughs> or us, for yeah. that matter. Just check. <laughs> you and me sitting up here and uh, up in the perch eating burgers. Maybe pass on the cookie in the plane. Maybe that's what I need to start doing. Right. Here. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to Brian Anderson, who's RBI single in the first inning, got the Marlins on the board. They then added a, a run in the fourth inning on a solo home run by Starlin Castro, but the Braves with three of their own in the bottom of the fourth inning. Thanks in part to a Dansby Swanson two-run homer to straightaway center field. 2-1 pitch on the way to B.A. is inside at 94 miles an hour from Kevin Gosman. Well, another hit with runners in scoring position for Brian Anderson. in the start at third base tonight. Haven't seen him there in a while. With the injury to Martin Prado that's put him on the DL. The injury to Miguel Rojas who he is working through not on the DL. He's actually pinch hit in this ball game. Anderson goes back to third but here he goes to short for the first out in the sixth inning. Let's take you back to the first inning. First pitch of the ball game, 97 miles an hour from Jose Urania gets all of Ronald Acuna Jr. Of course, the backstory on this, in case you missed it, Acuna Jr. with four home runs in the first three games of the series, including leadoff home runs in each of the first three games. Now, certainly, it's not for us to make any judgment until we hear from Jose Urania, but uh, this is where things started to come to life again after the benches had cleared and right. cooler heads had prevailed. Acuna Jr. walked right by the mound, left his shin guard there, and then we started all over again. So just to sum up everything, uh, Brian Snitker, the manager for the Braves, has been ejected. Urania ejected, and Acuna Jr. has uh, left with an injury. Here's Starlin Castro. Again, the reason why I say that, and I'm sure there are folks out there saying, well, we're just defending Urania. Let's let him decide first what he's going to say and what story he's going to tell and what position he'll take on this whole thing. The bottom line is this, and we talked about this before we came on the air. We talked about it on the bus and everything else about, well, you know, when a player is as hot as Acuna Jr. is, what do you do to kind of take him out of that comfort zone because he has swung at the first pitch and deposited home runs. Now this is not a, a situation where all right put him on the disabled list. That's not the story. It's just a matter of make him uncomfortable somehow some way. Well and I would admit this without uh, obviously you and I are up here and we watched everything that transpired. I think enough of us would agree that if we any of us any of the Marlins any of the Marlins players thought that was getting ready to happen it would have been handled before it was ever handled uh, it happened because that's not what you want to see happen that's my point JT Realmuto did not anticipate this I didn't anticipate it I don't think any of the Marlins thought this could happen although we would certainly admit to the possibility of it happen sure the point being that Jose Urania this season has hit 11 batters eight of them are right-handed so in his career, he's hit a total of 34 guys. And 19 have been right-handed. And we talk about the arm side run. 
We all saw the exact same thing. I don't think there's any getting away from it. My point merely is this. On the first pitch of the ball game, we knew that we were going to see a fastball, as I alluded to. It wasn't going to be the changeup. It's not his style. It wasn't going to be a slider away. Not his style. He was going inside. How far in? That was the question that we just don't know the answer to as far as our position. Urania has to speak for himself. Right, and we will uh, certainly allow him to do that. We'll hear from Don Mattingly as well after the game. WB Mason Marlins live post game show coming up afterwards. Ball and no strikes to Derek Dietrich. Gosman up to 95 pitches. Two outs here in the sixth. His last time out, again, his home debut with the Atlanta Braves went eight innings. In that start, pitched exclusively from the stretch. He opted to ditch the windup. Talk with the pitching coach Chuck Hernandez during a bullpen session. Braves are also moving him around the rubber a little bit to create some some better angles with his pitches as well. He said afterwards in my last bullpen I was working on staying closed a little longer. Something that felt really good in his bullpen. Worked last time out and to this point with the help of Three runs in the bottom of the fourth. It's kept him in the game until the sixth with a lead. And a strikeout, 97 miles an hour, top of the zone. Just his second strikeout, but we're through five and a half. At the bottom of the sixth inning here at SunTrust Park. Time for the Chevrolet Prospect Spotlight. The Batavia Muck Dogs and the players that represented them at the New York Penn League All-Star Game. Last night, the State College, the South defeating the North 7-1. Also a uh, promotion in there for one of the All-Stars. So uh, congratulations to all. J.D. Os uh, Osborne, rather. Promoted up to Greensboro. Been a lot of promotions recently throughout this uh, farm system here for the Miami Marlins. Ah. Drew Rosinski is in the ball game. He's the fifth pitcher tonight for Miami. 17th game this season. He'll face Charlie Culberson and then Ender Inciarte and Tyler Flowers.
And Rusinski has been absolutely fantastic that first inning that he comes in. Now a few times this year he's come in with the team needing multiple innings from him. He's only given up six hits, six for 44 hitters in that first inning. Only three extra base hits. And this might be one here for Charlie Culberson. It will be a leadoff double. And make that four. Another two base hit for Culberson. He's got two tonight. Well, it seems like everything off Culberson's bat, certainly in this series, has been an absolute rocket, and it's been line to line. Oh, shooting one down the right field line, fastball up away. Anticipating it, gets the extension he's looking for, and gets himself to second base. Well, that's his sixth double this year against the Marlins. Who will play the corners in against Ender Inciarte. Who had an RBI ground out back in the fourth to bring in Culberson. Couple of ground outs tonight for NCRT. The RBI ground out in the fourth and also a non RBI ground out in the second, as it were. Up the middle, that one gets into center field and around from third is Culberson. Gets away from Sierra, whose throw to second is not in time. Yeah, we continue to see the great, great base running from the Atlanta Braves in this series. We'll base it back through the middle by Inciarte. It's going to score Culberson easily. Long way for Sierra to come. Sierra gets burned again on a ball on the ground. Let's take another look. Base it back through the middle. Here comes Culberson. He scores easily. A little bobble in center field allows Inciarte to move into scoring position. And he kept his, looks to me like he kept his head down the entire time, just mishandled the baseball. So a single, an RBI, and an E8 to allow Inciarte to second as Tyler Flowers fouls one off 0-1. Flowers walked and scored back in the fourth. Runner goes. No throw. And 24 stolen base for Inciarte. Once again, Culberson just a couple innings ago did the exact same thing. Really no shot for JT. With stolen base. On Rusinski, slow delivery to the plate. Had a good six steps. For Rusinski, through home. Marlins are going to pull the infield in here, try to cut off another run. Now, Frenciarte adds to his single season career high. Previous high was 22 last year, as Holly mentioned, up to 24 with the theft of third. And foul tipped into the glove. And I think Flowers wants a fourth strike. It's easy to beat the heat when you become an energy saving expert. Go to FPL.com slash beat the heat. Well, we've seen him steal strikes defensively. He's trying to steal a strike offensively. He's really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
coach in the numbers coming into tonight's ball game. Now, the acting manager with Snicker having been ejected is Walt Weiss, and I wonder if he was just trying to get an explanation if uh, Flowers had just been confused as to what the what the count was. But I mean, there were two foul balls accounting for the first two strikes, so. It's not like there was a borderline call or anything, and I don't believe this came anywhere. Oh, uh, maybe it did come close. Well, and I think maybe he was hinting at a foul tip. Yeah. Potentially. Gotten into the dirt, too. Nevertheless, here's Dansby Swanson. Out to center field. Sierra makes the play. Comes up throwing. But another run will score. It's a sacrifice fly for Swanson. He's got three RBIs tonight. And the Braves have opened up a 5-2 lead. Well, I'll tell you what. After a strikeout in the second inning, Swanson's really found his path. A long home run to center field. That ball a rocket to see here in center. Now more than enough to drive in the next run for the Braves. And Flaherty will pinch hit. That's the end of the night for Kevin Gosman. Who goes the first six innings for the Braves tonight. And Johnny Venters, the lefty in the pen for Atlanta. Hitless in his last 15 at bats. His playing time has gone down considerably. Started the first the 23 of the first 29 games of the season, but just eight starts since. Part of that has been the emergence of Johan Camargo, who gets the night off tonight. The other part of that would be the emergence of Carl to Charlie Culberson, who gets the start tonight. to retire Flaherty, but the Braves score two more runs and have a three-run lead through six.
happens as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Paul Severino, Todd Hollinsworth, Jessica Blaylock with you. Demilo, hashtag Demilo Miami at Marlins. Of course, we've been uh, going through this a lot all season long. You can chime in. Really, is what we want is the feedback. New topics weekly. Entirely new list of questions. Love to get fans feedback when you come to the ballpark. What do you like? What don't you like? All kinds of stuff to try to help improve the fan experience at Marlins Park. So that's marlins.com slash dmillo for more. Austin Dean to lead things off against the new pitcher for the Braves. It's Johnny Venters. He takes over for Kevin Gosman, who goes the first six innings. Four hits, a couple of runs, two walks, two strikeouts. Austin Dean takes 95 miles an hour outside the zone for ball one. Dean with a fly ball out to Marcakis in right. One away in the seventh. Benzers has done a very nice job on the Braves bullpen this season. 2.70 ERA. He's pitched very well. Retiring 24 of the first 29 batters he's faced. You see that 2.70 ERA. He actually had a 3.86 ERA with the Rays, so much much better here in Atlanta. Ball to JT Riddle. A walk in the second inning and a line drive in the fourth. Mentioned a lot throughout this night about the uh, Major League debut of Austin Dean and, of course, Rafael Ortega, some of the youngsters with the Marlins, and there are stories of perseverance, but the same can be said for Johnny Venters. Three and a half Tommy John surgeries back on the big league mound. That's right, three and a half. Some guys don't make it all the way back from one. Originally a 30th round pick of the Braves back in 2003. Well, and not only that, if you go all the way back to who he was early on, you get back to a dominant reliever who was throwing 97. So not only was Tommy John a huge part of his life, but, you know, in some regards, losing what he had, meaning, you know, high-end guy, high-leverage guy for the Atlanta Braves who was getting it done and giving an awful lot of responsibility out of that bullpen. They reclaim that and to maintain the perseverance and a story. Backhanded by Albies to retire Riddle. And yeah, in 2010 for Venters, it was his first big league season, pitched in 79 games for the Braves and had a 195 ERA. The following year, he was an all-star, pitched in 85 games and had a 184 ERA. And he pitched in 66 games in 2012, but was not back in the big leagues until this year with the Tampa Bay Rays. Right. So from 2012 to 2018, a long road back as Sierra steps in with two outs. Still bringing it 95 miles an hour, too. My <laughs> goodness. Reclaimed. I was just sitting here thinking he's certainly reclaimed, reclaimed some of the velocity, not all of it. Still pretty good at 94-95. So Isaac Galloway on deck, Brett Braves in the bullpen for the Marlins. And after seeing that pitch in, I think certainly worth mentioning after everything that went down in the first inning, I've got to admit that the Braves have really handled themselves like pros tonight. This could have gotten a long, lot of different directions as far as uh, what they probably deem payback at some point. This game has obviously moved along. They've reclaimed the lead, but I think you know where I'm going with that. No, absolutely. Certainly the, the Braves at the start of play a two game lead on the Philadelphia Phillies who have taken a, a one run lead on the Red Sox in Philadelphia. So if they were to get mixed up in any sort of beanball with the Marlins tonight you 
might see guys lost for five, six, yeah. ten games. You certainly recognize the priorities there, but even to get that, I mean, there's no doubt you could feel the tension that was in the building in that first inning, and, and things sometimes get out of control. The Braves handled themselves uh, exactly the way that you would want them to for a team that's hoping to, you know, get to the playoffs this year under the circumstances. Payoff pitch to Sierra on the edge for a called strike three. 95 miles an hour, a one, two, three inning for Venters. Five, two breaks. And Southwest Airlines are giving you an opportunity to enter for a chance to win an all-inclusive stay in Nassau in the Bahamas on Labor Day weekend. Southwest Airlines Summer Days Getaway. Just tweet hashtag Southwest Summer Day Sweeps and hashtag sponsored at Fox Sports FL for your chance to win. Blooper is here. <laughs> Cooper's been on the pregame show an awful lot this he certainly uh, has. The last few days. Yeah. I mean, with all due respect, best looking one on the show, but <laughs> I kid. You will pay for that later. <laughs> I'm sure I will. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, he was mixing up, I think, with Dean out there today, too. He was uh, Dean's trying to stretch. Austin Dean's trying to stretch his first big league game, and he's got to put up with Blooper. Yeah, Blooper doesn't know. I don't think Blooper cares. <laughs> he probably doesn't care either. That's but right. I don't think he knows. That's what I surmise. You don't think Blooper's reading scouting reports and getting uh, notes before the game? Well, I just meant, you know, big league debut and, you know, he's not. Well, that's what I'm saying. If he had thumbed through the Marlins pregame notes today, he would have known that. No, he doesn't give me that vibe. I don't know. Brett Graves in his 10th game with the Marlins this year. Adam Duvall out to center field. That is the new center fielder Isaac Galloway to make the play. It's time for the Toyota trend here with one out in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Atlanta Braves atop their division. The last time they led their division on August 15th was in 2013. Since 1969. They've led their division 15 times on this date on their way to 12 division titles. Something tells me a lot of those division titles came in the 90s as Albies grounds out for out number two. So two quick outs. And that will bring up Freddie Freeman. For Graves, second appearance in the series, pitching game number two of doubleheader day. On Monday, inning did give up a hit, didn't walk anybody, a couple of strikeouts.
ball and strike on Freeman who singled in the first inning lined out in the third and was hit by a pitch in the fifth. Just talking about those 90s Braves and Freeman really the last link to that old guard. He made his debut when Chipper Jones was still on the team. Bobby Cox was in his final year as the manager. And then some lean years in between then and now. With the Braves at the moment atop the NL East. There's the Hall of Famer Bobby, Bobby Cox. Cox right there. How about that? Sharply hit and pass Riddle. We'll check that. That was Brian Anderson on the shift, but a base hit nonetheless. Well, second hit tonight for Freddie Freeman. You see the shift. He's going to find a hole right there to Hopper, just under the glove of Brian Anderson. Yeah, it's very interesting kind of, you know, you know, sort of way the parallels between, you know, where the Marlins are hoping to get to and where the Atlanta Braves are currently getting to in, as far as the organization and then looking at Freddie Freeman as kind of a, a pillar player, as I like to say. You know, they could have very easily, and I think a lot of people around baseball were like, why isn't Freddie Freeman available? Like, we should be trading for this guy. And they said, uh-uh, not only are we going to hold on to him, we're going to extend him and we're going to build around him, even though we know Maybe some thin years, lean years might be coming. And they parted ways with a lot of other players. Right. Like Hayward, Kimbrell, oh. Upton, Gaddis, Simmons, Shelby Miller. One man stayed. He's standing on first base. Or at least close to it anyway. <laughs> I'll grant you first base. <laughs> We're going to check on him and he's back. For all the youth that's around the Braves right now, the pillars offensively have been A, Freddie Freeman, and B, although in no particular order, the man at the plate right now, Nick Barcakis. He chops one right to Dietrich, who will beat Marcakis to the bag. So they have retired Marcakis all four times tonight. This game heads to the eighth. And 65 and older can receive a complimentary ticket to the game with a valid ID at the third base entrance to Marlins Park. Join us Thursday, August 23rd, when the Marlins face the Braves. For more information, visit marlins.com slash offers. The battery outside the ballpark, a 5-2 Braves lead here in the eighth inning. We check in with Jessica Blaylock. 
Hey, Paul Marlins hitting coach Frank Menachino sharing some exciting news with me this week. The Little League team that his brother-in-law coaches is advancing to the Little League World Series. Mid-Island got a shot out of Berlin in the 12-year-old division to punch their ticket to Williamsport. So congratulations to the Mid-Island Little League team and congratulations to Frank Menachino, who I'm sure will be keeping an eye on them. And by the way, when you said blooper was the most attractive one on the pregame show, you, you meant of the men on the pregame show, right? I'm sorry, you're breaking up, Jessica? When you said blooper. <laughs> I was kidding. Oh, yeah, no, gosh. Holly and I sound alike. Uh, that was Holly. I can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> uh, of course, I was talking about Craig and Nelly. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah, sure. I only say that because you sit behind me on the plane. You'll be kicking me the two and a half exactly. hours to Washington, D.C. Jessica, thank you very much. <laughs> Galloway pops this one out to Freeman. For the first out here in the eighth. So we get a look now at Brad Brock, the third pitcher tonight for the Atlanta Braves, his 49th game this season. Along with Kevin Gosman coming over from the Baltimore Orioles. Lots of deadline moves for the Atlanta Braves to help fortify this club. And Brock, part of it. Well, certainly, and they've all contributed. Only I've got about six earned runs now in over 30 innings between the three of them. So fantastic work about Ventures coming over, Brock and Gossman. By the way, I, I will add this too before uh, Jessica had called me out. The, the Mid-Atlantic uh, Championship along with the New England championship that Frank Manichino's involved with there. Breen Field in Bristol, Connecticut. That was the same Little League field that I played on. Wow. That's right. They played uh, two region championships there. Terrific facility there in Bristol, Connecticut. You made that facility famous, huh? Absolutely. Well, not so much me, but uh, Bartlett Giamani is uh, <laughs> who, it's, who it's named after. I've yet to dedicate a youth field. Give me time. Maybe I will. <laughs> I'll give you some time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a terrific facility over there. They've got all sorts of, not hotels, but uh, places to be for families who are there for the, the week of the tournament. Excellent stuff. <laughs> 95 miles an hour misses. Count runs full to Ortega. Sharply hit to Freeman, who backhands it and wins the race to the bag for out number two. Time for the Coors Light refreshing finish. There's Blooper, goofing around as always. Doesn't take anything seriously at all. Austin Dean trying to get ready for his first big league game. Rock, paper, scissors with Sierra. Starlin Castro, can you stay away from my teammates, please, Blooper? Jeez. Oh, Blooper's cool. Blooper's got a van outside, too. JT Real Muto 0 for 3 tonight. JT, a line out, ground out, and strike out. Sixteen home runs on the season. This one lined out to deep center field. Enciarte can cover some ground. Can he? Thought that might get over his head. But Enciarte makes the play.
Hitting MLB at bat is your number one app. Marlins baseball, customize your experience to catch every moment this season. Marlins home screen icons and features such as MLB.tv, Game of the Day, live radio broadcast, in-game highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB at bat today. A good look there at the Chop House. Out there in right field here at SunTrust Park. And a ton of uh, restaurants around here. Apparently there's, what is it called? H&F Burger right above that. I've heard nothing but good things about it. And in the, what seems like 612 games the Marlins have played in this ballpark, I have yet to try one of those burgers. The first pitch from Graves is up and in on Charlie Culberson. Culberson's got two doubles tonight. He's come around to score both times. There's H&F Burger. Have you had one of those yet? Nope. To hit that up uh, next year? Next time. Next year. That's what I'm saying. Next oh, time will yeah. be next year, yeah. Your treat will be great. We'll, uh, we'll go. <laughs> it's Culberson, Inciarte, and Flowers here in the eighth inning. that the Marlins keep the Braves right where they are. If the Marlins are going to have any chance to come back. This one goes right up the middle. Another base hit for Charlie Culberson. Now three hit night. He's been all over it. Double to left. Double to right. Base hit to center field. Well. We urge you to stick around as we do every night, but uh, perhaps this one even more so for the WB Mason Marlins Live postgame show. Craig Minervini, Jeff Nelson from the field. We'll hear from Don Mattingly, get his take on everything that went on in that first inning. We hope to hear from Jose Urania as well and allow him to speak for himself and address the situation and what happened with Acuna as this one is lined to Anderson, but Culberson is back. That's coming up on the WB Mason Marlins live post game show at the conclusion of this ball game. It steps Tyler Flowers 0 for 2 tonight. The fly out in the second walked and scored in the fourth. Struck out in the sixth inning. The way that the first inning went, the first pitch went, the circumstances a little different tonight for the Marlins bullpen. But it's a Marlins bullpen that held the Mets scoreless over nine and a third innings over the last two games of the series over the weekend. But the Braves have gotten to that bullpen in each of the four games in this series. Three runs against the pen in game one. Three runs against them in game two. Five last night and five so far here tonight. Again. Open basically picking up every pitch since the first one. In the night, the Marlins will have Anderson, Castro, and Dietrich. In all likelihood, A.J. Minter. Wave that and missed, and that's out number two. Nice breaking ball right there. He was able to take a little bit off, 81 miles an hour. Dansby Swanson, the go-ahead home run 
back in the fourth inning. Also added a sack fly in the sixth. Culberson away from first as Graves delivers the 2-0 and this one fouled into the seats 2-1. The season high tying three RBIs tonight for Swanson. Fourth time this year he's driven in three in a ball game. One out to center field. Plenty of room for Galloway. And the Marlins will come to the plate in the ninth inning, trailing by three. Five to two. is brought to you by Southwest Transparency Low Fares, nothing to hide. By Lincoln, join the Lincoln Summer Invitation Sales Event. And by your South Florida Honda dealers. Marlins trailing by three as we head to the top of the ninth inning here at SunTrust Park. It's time for the Bonefish Grill fresh catch of the day. Bottom of the fifth inning, that's D. Gordon patrolling center field, able to jump up and make the catch. And then in the top of the 12th inning, <laughs> connecting on a two-run home run, and that would be it in that game. A 2-0 Seattle Mariners win. Trying their darndest to cool off the Oakland A's, who are now 38-13 in their last 51 games. It's a pretty big moment for D. Leave that game scoreless going to extra innings. Does that make sense? <laughs> Both teams had zero. Yeah. yeah. It means scoreless. Yeah. There you go. All right, A.J. Minter into the ball game. 2.79 ERA on the season. Four-seam fastball slider. 96, 98 miles an hour. He's got a really good arm. These will change up as well. Doesn't throw too many. That slider, 92-93. Anderson, one for three tonight, one for four with a couple of strikeouts against Minter. And there is one away.
So it's Starlin Castro. And a home run to the opposite field, just enough to get over that wall in right field. His 10th homer of the season came back in the fourth inning. At the time, gave the Marlins a 2 0 lead. The Braves answered back with three in the bottom of the inning, added two more in the sixth. Just one at bat. Worth of history between these two. Castro 0 for 1 as he takes 97 miles an hour upstairs. An impressive swing from Castro on the home run. It's one of the hardest hit balls he's had the other way this season. Balls in a strike from Minter on the right side and into the seats. Arnold's looking for a rally here in the ninth inning as they head into the off day tomorrow in Washington, D.C. A three game set against the Nats Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Popped up right side for Freeman. And the Marlins are down to their last out. of reaction after the game. We'll hear from the skipper, Don Mattingly, get his thoughts on how this game started in the bottom of the first inning. Jose Urania hitting Ronald Acuna Jr. Bench is clearing. And going back to their corners before coming back out. Urania ejected. Acuna left with an injury. Again, the reaction on the W.B. Mason Marlins live post game show coming up. And hopefully still some life left for the Marlins. The 0 1 to Derek Dietrich. get a piece of it. Chad Fairchild said no he didn't get a piece and then Flowers applies the tag and the Atlanta Braves have taken all four in this four game series against the Marlins. Final count tonight five to two. There's their first four game sweep of the Marlins since May of 2006. It's been a while but this Braves team picks up the win despite the loss of Acuna. So at the moment, the Braves have picked up a half game on the Phillies who lead at home against the Red Sox, but lots of reaction coming up after the break. <laughs> 